Hi, I'm Daniel, director, DP, colorist, and um, I can't say this is scene lighting, but um, this is another review, but we'll not be breaking down any scenes. Um, today, I'll be looking at um, the C70 camera, and with the whole pandemic and people trying to stay alive, and with some classes, that will, so there's a lot going on that we couldn't like, um, get, to, like, get to the camera quickly. But I finally got around to get to the camera, and boy... <laughs> It's been a very interesting ride, or it's been a very interesting experience in the sense that um, 2020 has been a year whereby we've seen several technological um, release in terms of cameras and in terms of different solutions to different formats. But for me, most importantly, the new sensor, that, which is the DGO sensor, um, the dual gain acquisition that was released in C3 and Mark III, and now it's not available in C70, it begs the question that, um, that um, most creatives would like to get a answered, like, who's this camera for? Is this what I've been waiting for? Is this, would this be useful to me in any um, application? If that's the case, um, how, how does it fare? How does it adapt? And first things first, before we say anything, I would just start by showing you a clip. Canon advertised 16 stops of dynamic range. And I took the camera out and had it pointed against the sun. And again, the shady was between those, between that, and then you could actually count more than 16 stops. And you get to see it first and tell me what you think. If you've seen the clip, um, a couple of things start playing in my mind. Four or five years back ago, the way technology is now was not like that then. There are several limitations and being attached to a certain brand. There used to be like technological advantage with each brand, but <laughs> that's not the case anymore. It's just a case of now um, you, the creator, what you're able to develop with the tools you're with and how much you know your tool sets and also what you actually are bringing to the table because there's a lot this camera does um, and this some of that footage was recorded in 120 frames which is where DJO is not even activated and I could get that range so um, for those of you who don't know what DGO means, it's a dual gain sensor whereby a particular part of the um, a particular circuitry of the sensor exposes for the highlights and a particular circuitry of the sensor exposes for the shadows and they produce the same readout at the same time and that way you're able to get um, cleaner blacks and pleasant roll-offs in the highlight which you could actually see from some of the sample clips that have actually been shot. So a whole lot of documentary shooters who really want to like up their game will be leaning on, on this foot of this camera because there's now the speed boost dial that gives an extra stop to your normal Canon EF lenses. There's a normal adapter without the speed booster that just allows you to adapt your cameras into the EF lenses. If you take something like the 1880 and attach the speed booster and um, attach to that zoom lens, you actually now have like a cinema combo for like a docu setup that gives you a wide range of focal length of um, probably 4x zoom from, from right to one. And that will be specifically useful for documentaries and allows them to react with a t-stop of um, 2.8 if you're using the speed booster because you actually gain one stop of light when you're using speed booster um, attached to the camera. And with the fact that the camera now has DGO, which from my experience, um, yes, it, here's a test shot actually on the exposed by two stops and I could bring back the skin stone. So you could actually dig into the shadows and actually maintain cleaner blacks. 
And even when you stress the code there, because they're like, um, at first, uh, looking at the white pa paper sheet, I was like, why don't you just include raw on paper? But so far, the H.265 on, on this camera holds its own very solid when it comes to post-production. Uh, when I tried, when I first got the camera and started like getting sample footage, because um, at the time I didn't have the right card, so I was using the cards that I used on my 5D Mark IV that, was, that could record 4K. Um, those could actually record on this camera the H.265, but you can record high speed, but you could record normal 24, 25 frames per second and all other normal stuff at 4K resolution. So you have like inexpensive media that allows you to get into action. Okay, um, the V90 card is also not expensive. It's about a hundred bucks for like 64 gig, and that one, that that card you could actually use in recording up to 120 frames per second, and this is super amazing because a lot just opens up in terms of possibilities, especially for indie shooters and especially for those who um, I'm looking at this camera to be like a B cam to like a C300 Mark III that's actually with the raw capabilities. So for me. Pairing that with my own C300 Mark III already is an amazing choice because I get the ability to be able to um, turn this camera into like for carrigs, um, for carrig solutions. I know that it's going to hold up to the amount of dynamic range that's actually promised. I'm actually going to have the, um, these cameras can go into overhead rigs, go into crash cam positions, go into very nimble rigs where I do not have to actually like kit out the whole full camera and become very big. So. There's just now the common, the common denominator of personnel. How good is your skill set? How good do you understand these cameras? Because the camera comes in with things like false color already built into the cameras. You could load up to 16 lots that you could record directly into the file. Like right now, I'm recording on the C17 with a lot I load into the camera, so I don't have to even edit or color correct this video. It's just going to come out like that. And that's, there's no tweaks already done to it. And this could be like for very fast turnaround. For people who are doing um, um, low budget music videos that do not have like a shot, the long time to color correct, with a very properly built, remember the keyword is properly built technical lot. Um, you could actually have a couple in there and you could go in into action and actually deliver and you would not be disappointed. And this is. Uh, because I, I have like another video coming up that we actually went through like the menu structure and everything that is quite a long video so you might um, that's gonna be on YouTube um, probably a bit of it will be on Instagram if, if that's possible um, where then I'm also gonna like make another video whereby uh, we'll be sitting now in in, um, in post-production and looking at these clips because at first when the clips came out um, Resolve 17 could not read them I think it's the beta 4 that could not actually now read the H.265 clips or you could also record in XAVC whatever your flavor is and um, I had to transcode some of my H.265 into ProRes to be able to like be able to read them but right now that all that issue is a thing of the past this is really genuine if you actually I could send you some of the sample clips if you ever require to actually see the things I'm actually talking about and you stress test them on your own and see um, what, what I'm saying. The way the sensor um, process the highlight roll off, it's, it's very filmic with, with some silky veiling that usually happens to the lens when you actually have, and there's no like clipping to those data. This is without any kind of filter or any kind of promise or any kind of halation that's just that's supposed to like assist in the scattering of light and making it bloom. And this is just direct from the glass itself to the sensor. And I find it very interesting because all the things I actually notice are how um, you have like deeper saturations in the shadows and how you have more range. And even when you actually dig in and you you expose beyond, um, um, you try to like bring up the exposure beyond two stops, right? And you just drop in resolves um, 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 neat noise um, noise reduction. It actually just cleans it up as though they were not there was nothing there. And this is not um, um, looking at it from a perspective of of it being a a one to fit all. This is more like having. A robust solution that's actually been able to um, irrespective of because nowadays everything that's happening with um, COVID has made us actually start cutting down budgets and because we've started cutting down budget it's now actually key for us to be able to um, experiment with solutions find things that worked um, move away from things that were the norm because uh, we have to now become flexible and adapt to our constant changing environment and then things stabilize or we'll find a way to actually grow above this challenge. So it is actually 
um, key to actually find a solution that actually works in the sense that it actually brings um, together a couple of things that will actually um, assist you in becoming a better storyteller and removing the limitations that actually come. Because this camera goes on um, the, the recent running SC and could fit in a couple of spaces that like there's no more excuse of making bad content anymore. There's no more excuse. So um, I would tend to defer and agree to most of all the reviews that I did who actually see this camera as a big influence or there could be like a potential game changer because right now I, I think it's now up to the creators, it's now up to you. What are you, what are you going to create with what you have? There's no longer, oh, it is limited. It only has this. It only has that coded. You have 4K, you have 2K, you have HD, you have 24 frames per second. You have off frame rates. Like if you're shooting a fight scene, I could tell the camera and dial it in to shoot at 20 frames per second when I'm in the slow and fast mode and anything up to 60 frames, right? Use DGO. So when I'm in slow and fast motion, I also have access to DGOs. I could do the, it has a double card slot that you could actually put like a proxies into one corner that'll be baked in with whatever look you want for your editor to start editing while you could record in XAVC or recording the HVEC codec you get. At first, I, I, I had my doubts about the HVEC being, um, um, just a delivery coder and not an encoding coder, but so far I've not had any of those challenges with that. And it just begs the question that going into 21, this will really be an amazing um, tool that would actually um, come to actually prove itself in assisting independent creators and taking away from the norm of, um, of, of what it used to be. And I totally... Um, I, I, I'm definitely keeping one of this in my kit because um, there are nimble situations whereby these are just perfect solution for us, whereby you actually need to move the camera in interesting ways and actually see how it actually contributes. So um, I'll put up the next video and we're actually going to look at um, a couple of other factors in terms of um, um, going through the menus, the menu layout, which is actually similar to C300 Mark III. Like this camera is literally a C300 Mark III without an SDI function and raw capability. And the fact that we have also like a quarter mount, every inch of the camera is built with such thoughtfulness that vertical video become the problem. I do not need like an L bracket or that added expense. There's like a quarter screw in there. You could just flip the camera on its side and boom, you're ready. The camera also supports anamorphic if you ever get to use it for anamorphic um, projects. So there's quite a lot in there that um, I feel is is actually working for creators in this period, actually. There's quite a lot in there. And I think um, anybody who's deciding to be a cinematographer or a content creator, this is the best age to actually become such a person because all the tools are literally become available and there's no longer the prosumer tools, the prosumer tools in, in, in those days that actually that was out of reach you get now democratization of media has become a, a thing and you could make things according to your intent and i look forward to what you guys would create whenever you get like rent or check out this camera or buy your own or whatever it is but i'll see you in the next video when we actually go through the walkthrough and we do other things on the next time stay safe yeah it's almost ending keep improvising adapt and overcome